Low riding is self-expression. It's art on wheels. It's not a hobby, it's a lifestyle. It's truly passion. When you don't have the opportunity to, uh, to have a car of your own, to have your own lowrider, you just dream. And so I was dreaming at a very early age. At the age of six, I think I first fell in love with the lowrider. Our next door neighbor had this bomb, and he would clean it every Saturdays. And I would go out there and I would just look at him clean. And, and one day he says, you want to help me clean? I said, yeah. So all right, well, clean the white walls. And he said, you know what, I'll, I'll give you a ride when we're done. And so, you know, I'd finish and he said, okay, go ahead and wash up and, you know, and then we'll come out, we'll cruise. So I would run out inside, I'd wash up and then I'd run back outside and he would be gone. I never got that ride. I never got that cruise in that bomb. That's why I, I dreamed of having my own low rider. Because one day I said to myself, one day I'll have my own low rider and I'll clean it myself and I'll be able to cruise it when I want to. It's a 1961 Chevy Impala. The car is painted black. It's original red. All the red is red flake. So it, the paint dances in the sun and has uh, one spotlight. Usually cars like this have two spotlights. So, ah, I just need one. I want to be a little different. I got two antennas coming out of the back. I added an old car dealer tag from Salinas, California. You know, kind of remind me of, of where I'm from. It definitely has hydraulics. The steering wheel's uh, red flaked. I got a color bar on it, kind of, you know, a, a nod to the 70s, lowrider style. I got front and back bumper guards on there. I got the original true spokes and I got murals. So the mural represents me and who I am. It's a beautiful car. It's got a great red interior that has that Pendleton look. I wanted to give it that different look from everyone else's cars. I didn't get my first lowrider uh, until year, many years later, until I graduated from school, started my career, saved enough money, you know, and then one day I said, you know what, now is the time. And I found a 1963 Chevy Impala Super Sport. We took the paint off, pulled the engine, redid the tranny, redid the interior. I mean, I did it from the bottom up. And then an uh, old fraternity brother of mine said, man, I love your car. I'd love to buy it from you. Like, I didn't believe him. And sure enough, he showed me some money and he took the car. And, uh, you know, with, with cash in hand, um, I needed another one because I felt like I was lost. I, like, I don't have a car. I ran into some friends from Duke's Car Club and they said, hey, um, one of my neighbors has a car. I, we should go talk to him. Sure enough, there was this 1961 Chevy Impala convertible sitting in this guy's garage, been there for six years, just sitting there, just rotting away. And so I offered him cash right there on the spot and he says, sold. So I got the car home and immediately started tearing it down. I took the fenders off. We just started stripping it. The interior was missing a lot of parts. There was no seats in it. The, the wires inside the interior were all out. The steering wheel was not even put on all the way. I mean, the car was, was a disaster. But I had vision. I saw this car and I was like, you know what, I could do this. I could build this. I could, I could put it back together again and, and make it beautiful again. The motor was really bad. So what I did is I pulled, it's a, it's a 283, it's a power glide. I had a friend who's a mechanic and he rebuilt that. We did it to the original specs. You know, we painted it Chevy orange. It's got the old school air filter. It's got that genuine 1961 Chevy Impala feel to it. And I wanted to build this car thinking about my father and him being on this army base. This is the car he would have probably bought if he could afford it. And so I went out to, to build this car in his honor. My dad's uh, from the Philippines, so I'm first generation born here in the United States. My dad served this country, World War II, Korean War veteran, and he came here obviously for a better life. My mom from Mexico did the same. It was very easy for them to, uh, very similar in, in, in religion, in family upbringing, and so I love lumpia and I love tacos, so there you go. <laughs> my, my mom, when she first came to the United States, she worked in the fields. My father did as well being raised around the agriculture. I mean, it, it's one of the jobs that you, you had to experience, you had to do. And uh, at, a, at a very early age, um, you know, I was out there uh, picking strawberries and, and did that for a couple summers. Picking strawberries is, is a very tough job. I mean, you have to get up 
early in the morning, I'd say five o'clock in the morning, you get your cart um, and then you get your uh, box where you're gonna put the strawberries in. And uh, one by one, you go through the, the strawberry plants and you pick away and you drop the strawberries into the box. And you would do that all day until, until uh, um, it was time to go home. And you'd have to wash your hands with bleach to get the uh, strawberry stains off your fingers. And then and you eat and you go to sleep and you do it all over again. You know, I look back and I think about my father wanting to try to teach me that, hey, you could do this for a living or you could, you could get your education. He knew there was something better than, than for us to be working in the fields. And, and, and he wanted a better opportunity for, for all of us, for all of his kids. So my father always said, you know, you got to get an education, even though he didn't know what path to take, you know, or how to, how to get there. And I knew, you know, if I want to do this, or if I want a better opportunity, I need to go to college. Just got accepted to San Jose State University, but I remember getting my, my financial aid check and going, wow, this is going to pay for college. And I took that check. I went down to the DJ store and I bought myself two turntables and a, a mixer. So I took a gamble. It was a crazy gamble. My mom. I remember telling me, Mijo, how are you going to pay for your books? I said, I don't know, Mom, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn how to do this. And I'm going to DJ these parties and quinceañeras and weddings. And that's how I was able to uh, get through college, you know, was, was DJing. During the uh, late 70s, early 80s, hip hop came around. And I fell in love with the music of that, that, that time frame. And uh, there was a, a radio DJ that would, that would play Bubba G. Scotch, and he played all this great music. And I would sit at home with my, with my radio and cassette tape, and I would record his music off the radio. And I would make my own mixtape of all this great music from the early 80s, all this hip hop music. And when you're a big kid, you can't spin on your head or do a backspin. So I had the music though. So I was the kid that had the boombox and all the cassette tapes with all the cool music. And I would play the music for all the poppers and break dancers. And it was just so beautiful to make that connection. That's how I fell in love with, with wanting to be a, a DJ on the radio, listening to that, that guy on Friday nights, Bubba G. Scotch, and hearing all his music he would play. And like, wow, I was so amazed by it. So now I'm Javier the X-Man here at Magic 92.5 in San Diego. And I've been so fortunate and blessed to have the opportunity to, to be in this one radio station, Magic Night 2.5, and in this community. And uh, I, I love the community. I love the people here in San Diego. I, I love the city of San Diego. And it's, it's just been a blessing for me to have my career this long in this one city. It's just been, it's been crazy, but I, I'm just so appreciative. One thing I love about low riding, it's about the individual. The car represents the car owner. It's your self-expression. It's who you are. And I got to put who I am in my low rider. Of course, it's, it's my car and I'm a DJ. I got the shifter and cut it off and added a microphone. So it kind of represents who I am and what I do and uh, my passion for being on the radio. If you look at that shifter, it says, okay, that's the X-Man's car. <laughs> it's just not an ordinary shifter. It's, it's my signature, I guess you'd say. You know, I have the opportunity to be on a radio station and have my own radio show and be behind this powerful microphone. What I want to do is not only, you know, play great music and entertain people, but also make a positive impact in my community. People of color are underrepresented. We just don't donate blood. We don't get on the bone marrow registry. We don't know how, we don't know how it works. And so I wanted to help raise that awareness. There was a little boy who desperately needed a bone marrow match. The police department, National City PD said, we're gonna do an event. And I said, you know what, let me take it another step. Let's do a little car gathering and get people to come out. And so I started an event called Javier the X-Bands, Cruise for the Cause. And we raised money for a nonprofit here in San Diego called the Emilio Norris Foundation. These are the people that pick up those kids who don't have transportation to their cancer treatments. And so I raise money for them. And it's a great event. And every year it gets bigger and better and bigger and better. And it's just great to see the community come together for a great cause like this. I love people. I'm just a person that loves people. And when I get those inquiries about how did you become a radio DJ or can I go visit the radio station? I'm like, yes, the door's open. Come on in, come, come see what I do. There's gonna be people that are gonna tell you no all the time. There's gonna be people out there that are gonna shut the door in your face. But if you have the passion, you have the drive, you've gotta go for it. 
and you gotta give it your all. When I look back on my humble beginnings, I think that has taught me to appreciate every day I'm on the radio, every day I'm in a community helping people. It tells me, this is where you belong, this is your community. Be appreciative, be blessed, be thankful that you're in a position to do what you love to do. I'm Javier, the X-Man. I'm a radio personality and I'm a lowrider role model.